and weapon safety. Yeah. And keeping those safe around you. Hooray. I'm Megan. I'm Ash. Ronan. Noah. I'm Eric. And here we go. So uh, when you go to a convention, you want to be, first and foremost, you want to be safe. You bring your props, you bring your weapons, and you go through weapons check, things like that. What's the first thing that you want to make sure that you have ready? No metal. Money to bribe. <laughs> I'd actually, I'd even back up a bit. It's getting to the con. Yeah. You know, um, because, you know, you're, you can be riding the, the bus, you can be riding with friends, you can ride in public transportation, and you don't want to have a bunch of weapons hanging out. You know, yeah. that's a big, pretty big red flag. And you want something that's transportable and will fit in your vehicle. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Or a bus or, you know. Yeah. I found that out the hard way with my five-foot scythe. It's five foot tall and, like, four feet wide. That insect blade thing? Mm-hmm. I think it's massive. No, no, that, that, thing, that thing's eight feet tall. I'm talking about my big scythe I made. Oh, that thing. Yeah. And it's too big to fit in my car, so I can't take anyone to con if I take that. So decisions must be made. If and you do, you behead them next. Yeah, or I can literally beat someone to death with it. (laughs) So I think probably the first rule is uh, make it disassemblable. Yep, that's a mouthful. Uh, Make sure you can you know you can put a screw in the middle, you know, so you can un you know you can untwist that shaft into two parts, you know, or make the blade come off. Some kind of pin mechanism to keep it in there. I just did that. I made a (laughs) I'm making a six foot sniper rifle in the middle. So it comes in, snaps, and locks in place like a taillight blinker. Super awesome. Taillight. That's super clever. Yeah, like putting headlights in your car and you go... Yep. You twist. It's it's a it works twist the same lock. way. It's a twist lock. Yeah, and it just took a, a trip to Home Depot on my lunch break to figure out how to do it. So, so, you, so you make sure that your weapons are transportable. Mm-hmm. You get to the convention. You go to weapons check. What do you need to look out for? Uh, well, a couple of things. If you have a big weapon, you need to watch out for other people. Right. You, know, you don't want to hit them. You don't want to nail them. Um, you want to make sure that... All of your weapons are, you know, available for them to check. Yeah. Especially if you're a Deadpool or, you know, Star Wars. We like to have a lot of weapons, things like that. Yeah, my friend Jenny has a, a scythe from Ruby, you know, R-W-B-Y dynamic. That thing is, like, uh, how far is that? About three and a half, four feet long, and then it's like six feet high. I mean, that thing comes apart in pieces so she can bring it through. Mm-hmm. But you got to watch out because she's swinging around a couple times and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, Dodge. I found if you be polite to the people there, most of the time they let you through. You know, like I, when I was going through with my big scythe again, there was like a Deadpool there, and he was being really Deadpool esque when it was not right for him to be Deadpool esque. You can mm-hmm. be out of character for weapons. Yeah, yeah. Like, let, like don't start pulling out weapons out of hidden pockets and whatnot and pointing them at the people checking your weapons. Yeah. That's a smart idea. Yeah. Definitely so, not. Especially because it could be viewed as like a hazard. Like you become a liability mm-hmm. and they might not let you in because they don't know if your weapon's real or not. They have not checked it yet. Don't ever aim your weapons at anybody ever. Yeah. Just like they say in, in gun safety, don't point your weapon at something unless you intend to kill it. Yep. Right. Even with cosplay weapons. So always yeah. treat your weapon as if it's real. And I know that a lot of uh, conventions have different rules and different ways to go through weapons check, but generally they're the same. There's, like, no, like, actual swords. Like, even if you buy a sword or a katana or something at a convention, they wrap it up in, like, a box. And, and you they, have and to... And you tie it to the hill. Yeah, and, and you... Yeah, they immediately walk you outside or make someone take it outside to your vehicle or wherever, you know, your hotel room. Um, but when you make your weapons look realistic... What's something that you try to keep in mind? Um, do you like keep in mind about like, the materials that you use to build your weapon, just to like, you know, you like you had your sorry, I'm like stuttering. Um, you have your this weapon here, and then you have the one that you made look more realistic and more weathered. Um, how does that normally go through weapons check? Um, pretty good. Like for example, this is, I mean, even realistic or fake weapons can look realistic. I mean, this is an airsoft gun that I picked up for because it was broken, and I paid like three bucks for it. But it's as heavy and real as a real a pistol. I mean, it's heavy duty. It can hurt someone as compared to this one, which is plastic. Obviously, when they touch it, they can tell it's, it's broken. But the, the main thing is keep the, the orange thing on there. Or this, paint your tip. Yeah. yeah, paint your tip. This one, I didn't paint my tip on this one, mostly because I keep yeah. it in a holster the whole time. And so when I get in there, I mean, it looks realistic but it doesn't look like a real weapon that would yeah would it doesn't be look around. functional yeah you know, that's for star wars that's one thing about star wars type stuff is it's sometimes it's based on real stuff 
but it's so indistinguishable that you you can tell that's obviously not a real weapon. Right. But still, even on the bigger ones, you know, the orange tip is, is really important to have on there. May not look cool in pictures, but rather but you can, have that than get shot. Yeah, and they can always edit that out, or you can edit mm-hmm. that out if you want it to look, you know, better. Uh, I've had a couple costumes where I use airsoft guns, but I gut them out so mm-hmm. that, you know, they're not they're, they're not light. functional at all. Yeah. And uh, I know that sometimes they ask you to fill them up with, like, wax or fill them up with foam or something to make it look so that they know that it's not functional. Mm-hmm. But if you don't want to do that, get a toy weapon and paint it or make it look different. Uh, don't ruin functional weapons. Uh, just make sure that they're not functional and functional when you actually bring them with you. I know with uh, things like crossbows and guns, a lot of cons will require a stretchy string, like an elastic string, not like your typical, you know, uh, bow string where you, know, you really need to pull it back. But just so it's stretchy, which makes one makes it easier for you to pose uh-huh. with your weapon because you can go whoop like you're gonna shoot. And it's not like yarn. and it's like you're not <laughs> pulling back 50, 60, 80 pounds and going hurry up and take the picture. You know? Yeah. That way you also can't put an arrow on it and shoot somebody. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, like, no, like, I don't know. You can't really throw objects at people. For instance, I did a hit girl costume, and I had this fake toy grenade. So fake that when you push the button, it made, like, the tick, 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 tick noise. And then sure. some fake, like, <laughs> explosion. And they made it, like, they made me promise that I was not going to throw it at anybody because obviously it's not a real grenade. And I didn't want them to zip tie it to my body because I would hold it in, like, pictures. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's funny, though, because every time it kept falling off, like, my belt loop. And, like, as soon as it hit the ground, so many people just, like, backed out of the way. And they were just, like, playing along. Everyone's like, grenade. But uh, you want to make sure that it's something that you can either, like, get zip tied to you, just Mm -hmm. something that's not going to hurt anybody else. I think one of the key things is the trigger. Like, for example, this one I built without a trigger um, because this one's just made out of wood. These ones have the trigger in them because that's where they came. You can, if you don't plan on using it for uh-huh. like airsoft, just break the trigger off. Um, a lot of cons will actually zip tie the trigger so you can't use it also. Uh-huh. And so, you know, if they can tell right away that it's not um, a, a real weapon, you know, that's what they're looking for. And I don't know if you guys do this, but normally they'll put stickers on it. And if mm-hmm. you don't want that to show up in pictures, I always make sure that they, I ask them to put the stickers on the insides. Mm-hmm. So when they're in holsters or in my hands, you know, you know, they won't be they won't be shown. And I always switch them. Like if the sticker's on the inside, I hold it with like the hand that's not going to show it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I go, along with triggers goes along with trigger safety. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, trigger just, discipline. Just like don't point it at anybody you don't you know want to get shot by. <laughs> and also uh, just keep your finger off the trigger. Yeah. Yeah. Don't put it on the trigger. Just kind of put it out to the side on the. And it, and it also like makes oh. you look like you know what you're doing. So you, yeah. it's, I don't know, you're just almost representing the fact that you acknowledge that you're doing it properly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've heard stories of, uh, I think this happened at Salt Lake Comic Con a few years ago. There was a, a guy, I'm not sure if it was an umbrella corp, but someone in you know, full body armor, much like a riot you know, outfit. He had a, like an airsoft weapon with an orange tip, but they couldn't see it because it's a crowded train. Right. And the security guy was getting nervous. He's like, am I going to have to shoot this guy? Is he going to, is this a terrorist thing? I think he's a little paranoid, but because there were 10 other, you know, 10 zillion other costume people on Yeah, there, yeah. You should be able to figure that out, but you never know. And so police and security people are, you know, they're down the road with the worst possible case scenario. They don't care if it's a prop, they'll shoot you. Yeah. If you start pointing that at people, they're not going to take a chance. Yeah, especially if it looks like a real weapon or is a real weapon. They can't tell from that distance if it's functional or not. Um, But, yeah, you want to practice trigger discipline just to make sure that you know how to handle a weapon properly. So do you have any tips on uh, or any examples? I know you have some props. uh, How to handle weapons properly as you're holding them. Do you want to demonstrate? Um, Well, here is... For the people who can see us and aren't just listeners. So this is what is called trigger discipline. Uh, military, they teach you to only put your finger on the trigger when you plan to shoot it. So you keep it off. That's why you can tell in movies when they're having it on the trigger and pointing at people, and they're just stupid. Um, always point it uh, away from anyone. Point it to the ground. Point it to the air. Never point it at someone. Uh, just things like that. Just be smart about it. Treat it as if it were real. Right. As I pointed at her on accident. Yeah. <laughs> Well, usually yeah. you see people this with rifles. Is what not to do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Usually you see people with rifles. They're always carrying it down. You know, mm-hmm. they kind of got it underneath the shoulder. They're pointing down, just like that. You know, or it's slung over the shoulder, pointing up. You mm-hmm. know, and even with made-up weapons, like ones from video games that you know aren't 
things that most people would just have, you know, as a concealed weapon. Mm -hmm. um, just like the big staffs or whatever, just make sure that, you know, hold them in a way where it's not going to hit anybody else, it's not going to hit you, and it's not going to look threatening. Yeah, it's not, and then you don't want to have an aggressive stance. Right. With it. My, one of my big things is, this is just something I've learned. Uh, people probably want to, like, take your weapon from you, like mm -hmm. a picture. They'll be like, hey, can I hold that? Don't, don't let them. Because you know how heavy it is and how to, like, how to control any right. weapon you make, you know. But if you let somebody else use it, they probably end up, you know, hitting a little kid in the face. Yeah, you're responsible for that that prop yeah. weapon right. yeah. regardless, you know. Yeah. So Con staff will say, well, you gave it to him. It's your fault. He yeah. it didn't poke this kid in the eye. You're out. When I, like, weapons. when I take pictures with, like, little kids, if I'm dressed up like Thor, like, I'm guilty of here, like, here, do you want to hold the hammer? But, you know, their parent mm -hmm. is right there. And it's not a weapon that, it's made out of styrofoam. It's not a weapon that's going to hurt anybody. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they'll, they'll just. And they're, but they're they'll tiny. hit their little sister. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually, um, like, when you're looking at. Uh, Two seconds. For armor and <laughs> stuff like that. I mean, when you look at the Warhammer, Warhammers and staves are really good because they're not that threatening. You know, kids can use them. It's better than a gun. So right. if you have a choice, look at those types of weapons. Yeah. Because um, I, I found when I have a big Warhammer, it's a long one, and I use it to crowd little kids in, too, to t take a picture. And when I go to events where, not even cons, but doing, like, uh, charity work, I can have a weapon, and it's not a, a threatening weapon. Yeah. Just like if you have a weapon that's retractable. Like, mm -hmm. uh, last weekend, um, as Deadpool, I had a retractable katana. And, mm -hmm. uh, or if you have, like, a lightsaber. If you're not using it, Put it away. <laughs> so it doesn't, like, you know, hit anybody or accidentally, like, walk into people. Which, you know, I think we've all done at one point or another. You're just like, oh, sorry. The this middle the of the crowded aisle places. is not the place to show off your weapon. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Unless it's going to be something that you're holding, like a Gandalf staff or something or like, like that. Where it's not really going to... Yeah, yeah, you're not, not going to go anywhere, you know, spin it around in circles. Around. Um, so what about uh, posing in photos? As far as, as far as handling and carrying your weapon. I know we just talked a little bit about that. Um, but just specifically when someone's taking photos with other people or um, just like almost like modeling them in photos by yourself. I think the same things apply. Just be aware of your surroundings. Um, be aware of who else is going to be in the picture or around the picture. Because if you're just randomly pointing it down the hall, but then someone down there sees it, yeah. you know, you're, you have to be aware of what's going on. Right. And are you uh, particular about the way that you hold the weapons? Like, do you want to be correct? I am. But yeah. I think that's probably, you know, you know, being true to the weapon and also being true to the character. Right. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, none of my cosplays yet have props. Mm -hmm. I'm working on it, but none of them are there yet. But, yeah, you want to hold it and really kind of be like the, the character, yeah, but also yeah. be safe. Yeah, I mean, unless your character holds it in a weird way. Like, there's some, like, the, the rifle that I'm making now, um, I've seen some a lot of reference pictures, and no picture is holding it as you would hold a rifle. Right. And so, obviously, that's what the, the fans are used to. That's what they're going to do. And so, you know, research, do some research on your character. If it's just like a, a, a standard military a soldier, things like that, you know, there's certain ways we hold them. Mm -hmm. Something I saw at Anime Bonsai, actually, there's an anime called Soul Eater, and a kid, a guy named, uh, like, Death the Kid, he doesn't hold his pistols like you, know, like you normally do. He holds them like this. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because they took the kid's picture, but he was holding them like this. And when they took the picture and walked away, they go, I don't think that kid knows how to hold a gun. But it's like the character yeah, holds it like that. Yeah, yeah. He holds them like that. But like they just like walked away and they're like, I can see Rice and turns to let him out of the house. And it was like, yeah, it was totally yeah. the character that does that, not the kid being dumb. But yeah. So I don't know. You just got to – like another one is if you do like a versus kind of picture, you know, because a lot of people are like, hey, Deadpool. And then all of a sudden Spider-Man will like photobomb and run out of nowhere. So then like – it just really be mindful of what you do. Like I know some Deadpool's like to get into it. Yeah. Because Deadpool's like the biggest weapon. Really into character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know I don't know if you guys saw one at uh what was it, Phoenix. He was like had his things and he was like running down the hallways with his katanas out, like on the sides, and just running like up and down that hallway and it's like yeah. Were they like were they They're they're like, like real metal, but he was just, they weren't sharp, but he was just like running up and down and Security Yikes. started chasing him. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Deadpool. <laughs> That's all you have to say. Oh, Deadpool. <laughs> um, so what do you guys generally make your... Um, being aware of the regulations and the rules, what do you generally like to make your props out of? Foam. Plastic. 
plastic and foam. Warbler. Wood. Wood. You can do like you can cheat with balsa wood. wood and stuff, and as yeah, a core, but like a lot of the big stuff. Uh, like I say, my friend Jenny, her Sai from Ruby, that's all uh, foam board, you know. But it's you know that's long and it's really detailed, you know. But it's nice because you can cut it and make you know give it real nice crisp lines, and then paint it or you know hit them hit it with a marker and do all that stuff and get all that detail. But that thing is light. And it's like, woo, that's light. That's not bad at all. Yeah, my favorite is expanding foam because I like big weapons like Monster Hunter weapons, you know, from the game Monster Hunter, the whole series. And there's something about that game where they don't think little is good enough. <laughs> they make the weapons like nine feet tall and then they're wielding like a giant sword with one hand. And it's like, okay, if I want to be true to character, it's got to be light. So I use... That where you need to beef up. Yeah, that too. <laughs> I got to use expanding foam to make it light, and then you have to carve that down. And every like expanding foam weapon I've taken places never gets any hassle because like if they're like, let me see that, like they check it, and they feel it, they're like, yeah, you're not hurting anybody with that. But I don't know, just expanding foam. There you go. Yeah, that's, that's one thing too. Is wood is really awesome too, um, the, but the problem is uh, it can get really heavy really fast. Yeah, so that's I, actually that's not a yeah. light. Not, yeah, so if you have, a, I mean, I keep this in a holster most of the time. I make some bigger rifles, uh, but they're you know, like 10, 15 pounds. But then over the course of the whole con, that's a lot you're holding up yeah. the whole time. Yeah, it's just and, like and switch it's hands. Down your pants at the same <laughs> time. Yeah, yeah. Plumber's crack. Yeah. <laughs> Han Solo's crack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most I, of the time when I have a weapon, like they're either airsoft guns that are gutted or they're out of styrofoam. Like, like you, like I don't use very many props because a lot of the characters I have either have some sort of a gun or nothing. <laughs> yeah. I think one other thing, uh, the big thing with stabs is either um, a PVC pipe with a wood core to straighten out the PVC pipe or even a carbon fiber tube, which surprisingly aren't that expensive. Yeah, and it'll pass. It'll pipe. pass regulation. Right. And it's light because remember, you got to carry that thing around you all day. All right. day. That's one thing you got to be Eight aware. pounds adds up times eight hours. You're just over there switching hands. Like, I'll walk with uh, it over here now. Or like, we'll just put it away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's one thing you got to be, like I said, back to Monster Hunter because their weapons are huge. And some of them are like a gun lance thing, which means you get to carry a shield in one arm and then a lance that's 12 feet long, one-handed in the other one. <laughs> so you something lean back when you try to hold that up? Well, yeah. like some leverage on it? You're like, <clears throat> yeah. And the way you have to do it is you have to, like, in the actual game, like, they pull it back and then they, like, kick a trigger to actually make it shoot. <laughs> so you're like, okay, they know this is big and heavy, but it's just trying to be, like, my biggest thing for weapons is I've learned the hard way, space, lightweight props, because the one scythe I keep talking about that I made weighs 12 pounds. Wow. And if I accidentally swing that thing, like if I'm, like, posing for a picture and then changing it up, anything in that thing hits will break. My scythe won't because I've dropped it and I've smashed against things on accident. But anything, you can drop somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> anybody, anybody that I hit with that's going down. Like if someone stole a purse near me and I had that, they're dead. So you, when you have big props, do you tend to uh, stay in like the more open areas or do you try to weasel through the crowd like the rest of us? I've learned to weasel through the crowd. <laughs> so I hold it. Like The best part is it's like really awesome, almost like PR. Because the people like in the crowd, and all of a sudden they just see this giant, almost like Jaws fan, just like, dun -na, dun -na. <laughs> like what, what was that? Dun and then they see it, and then they're like, what the? Because when you see something like eight feet in the air, you're yeah. like, well, I don't know what that is, but I want to see it. You become a beacon for people who are looking for you. Yeah. You're like, oh, oh, there he is. Look for that <laughs> walking found him. tower thing, yeah. The Star Wars bunnies were over by that guy with the big thing over there. Big, giant, <laughs> the big nine giant foot side. tall thing. Yeah, that thing. That's Yeah, I see him. Okay. Like it's, from across the convention like I remember when my friends first got there they called me and like where are you and then I like lifted it up as Sweet. by holding the end and they're like oh they're well like, we're oh, cool. like we're on the very end and we can totally see that so we're on our way so yeah it was Perfect. like it's basically see, it's like an, useful like an info like one of those info signs sometimes they carry around you it's are like, here yeah look for the guy at the giant scythe and I could just stand there and everyone will use me as a landmark so <laughs> so you're in the Cray clan uh, Mandalorian mm -hmm. Mercs it's a Utah chapter um, do you guys have uh, specific things that you do for weapons or uh, certain rules or anything like that? Yeah, we actually do. And it's uh, basically it's follow the guidelines of your local cons. And basically every con has the same rules. You know, orange tip, 
uh, things like that, they're becoming more strict on that where is if someone were to, to apply, I mean, everything has to be Star Wars looking. It looks like it's from the universe there. But if it looks too realistic, they can, like when you go to join, they will deny your application if it looks too real. Okay. And so um, they want to make sure it's you're safe, people aren't getting shot, going to cons, things like that. That's what they note here in lessons very often. Star Wars and realistic looking. Mm -hmm. Those are just two things that don't really come together. Well, I mean, here's something that I use for Star Wars. This is actually, it looks like a 40 millimeter grenade, but it's actually PVC pipe fittings. Cost me two bucks at Home Depot, got three pieces, stuck them together, sanded it down, and painted it up. And so I'm using this for, as part of my Star Wars, but this right here, the good thing, could be used in a modern, could be used in a lot of stuff. And so something like that, I mean, it's, it's totally plastic. It's hollow. If someone looks at it, they can see the inside of it. Right. Um, but it looks realistic enough. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I could even get in trouble for this certain places. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, so at least they, you know, stay on top of it, like, because uh, you guys have to get checked in, and they have to be, everything that you guys do has to be approved. Mm-hmm. So it's cool that they, you know, check things like that for mm-hmm. other people's safety. Yep. And no matter what, no matter what your prop is, it's still literally a weapon. Yeah. Right. No matter how light it is, you could still probably hurt somebody with uh-huh. any single prop you have. So yeah, it's like I could totally, I could totally take out Trevor over there with this uh, training knife. It's it's rubbery and bendy, but if I throw that, he's gonna be hating it. Yeah. Right. And there's like no projectiles. <laughs> yeah. That's. I think that's the one rule in like all cons, though, right? Like nothing can actually shoot anything. Right. Yeah. No projectiles. So. Yeah, that's just what. That's another thing is I've learned. No matter how fake your prop is still hurts to get hit by. Mm-hmm. Right. No matter what it is. So. Well, and one of the things, too, especially when, when you're looking at props, like for swords, for example, a lot of people like want to make them out of wood because it looks cool, you can make it. But a lot of cons have uh, rules against that because you can hurt people with wood. Mm-hmm. And so if you make it out of uh, like rigid foam or expanding foam or something like that, you can pose with it. Right. And so you don't have all this work hiding in this, uh, a sheath somewhere. Yeah. And I feel like it'd be... Yeah, it's lighter, too. I feel like it'd be easier to make it look sharp without actually being sharp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you accomplish that with paint. You know, you you can paint on your highlights and your shadows to give it that extra glint of that sharp edge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. White is probably the easiest color. Yeah. Anything else anyone would like to add? (laughs) Awkward silences are awkward. (laughs) That's what I'd just say, is when you get weapons, um, every weapon should be treated as real. Right. No matter what it is, uh, make sure the safety of it is. And don't try to argue with the con people Mm -hmm. about, oh, well, this weapon is this. This is that. You know what? Obviously, this is a fake weapon. You know what? Obviously, it's not. Yeah. And they post very detailed, uh, like, they have, like, you know, cosplay rules. And they're normally, you know, they're guidelines. But then the weapons check, they have lists of things and materials that you should make them out of and and things that you can and cannot do with them. Mm -hmm. So at least they're... They're on top of the ball. Yeah, and you're not going to win in an argument against the con. Like, if they have the posted rules of what, like you said, the list of what you can and cannot do. Right. You can't walk in and be like, well, I wasn't aware that I wasn't allowed to bring a real metal metal sword. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, it's kind of on our website. And if you take the time to look, you can find out every weapon you want to bring, if it's con approved or not. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's so just something you should probably do if you want to so do it. So definitely be mindful and pay attention to the website because a lot of times, you know, they have that info. Well, they, they always have that information listed. Yeah. The one thing, too, is, oh, can I say that knife? So this is uh, it's a replica of a K-bar. It's a old military knife. It's and that's been, rubber? It's rubber. It's it's a plastic. And I got this at Airsoft store for $10. I actually have a real one I was going to bring to compare. Um, but, you know, Airsoft stores have a lot of the good stuff. A lot of things, like this was a broken Airsoft gun I got for $5. You know, um, and so if this looks real enough for cosplay, but it doesn't look real enough for cops yeah. and stuff. And it even says right on there, training knife. If you're, uh, A lot of times there's replicas of these where the resin guns, uh, someone made a cast of it. And you, know, you can do your military, or the police use training ones all the time. You can get a hold of those, made of rubber. Uh, you know, so stunt, stunt guns. Yeah, stunt yeah. guns. And so you can achieve the look with, and still be safe. Right, and you, like you said, even if it's a pure cast thing or if it's a rubber weapon, you can paint it up, add your highlights and your details to to give it that more mm-hmm. realistic effect. But it's also you know blunt, you know, yeah, and not really uh, going to hurt anybody unless you really want to. 
Paint is the magic. <laughs> Paint does. This is what goes into the last podcast, talking about details, and you can make it, you know, look realistic. Mm-hmm. What are the What are your favorite props that you've that you've made? Mm. I'm working on a Sodan staff weapon from Stargate. The one that the Jafals all run around where they open up, they, they point it and it goes whoosh, and it opens up and then That's shoots awesome. out. I'm working on that mechanism. So I, I like animatronic stuff. So that one's a booger to build, but it's got so many details on it, you know. So lights, fun stuff. Mm, the one I've built so far is actually going to be the one I'm working on. And it's, I, don't, I can't even remember the name, but it's uh, the Gormangala... Insect Glaive from Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. I love it because it's pretty, and it's a staff sword. It's kind of iridescent, isn't it? It's like pink and green. Stuff. Yeah, it looks it, like a like a carapace off of a an insect yeah, shell. Yeah, yeah, and it kind of like when I get all the stuff, it, it'll glow and all the cool stuff. And it has like a bug shield arm arm thing that I get to make. But that's probably my favorite, is because I just I don't know why I like big weapons. Because the bigger, it's, the more fun it is to make, and the more it helps you stand out. Because like, not to say, like, diminished guns or anything, but anyone could have a gun. But if you can literally make a nine-foot-tall staff blade thing. Now, did you scale it to your height, or you just go off the weapon is that big, period? Uh, I looked at the character, and it's five feet taller than the character, so I made it about four feet taller than me, because I'm like, I still got to get through doors. <laughs> so, yeah, it yeah. was a pain, but, yeah, I scaled it off of me. That's the other thing, con doors. Make sure you can get through them. <laughs> Or otherwise, mm-hmm. you're like corralled in one area. Turn like a 25 to... point turn just to get inside. So don't don't mm-hmm. be like the dog with a stick that comes in through the dog. Eagle. <laughs> Thunk, you know. Well, for me, the for me the best weapon is the one I don't have to make twice. You know, for me, I, I've realized I like just making the weapons. You know, a lot, some people make a bunch and, and sell them things like that. That's like you know, I was talking to another guy the other day. Is you know, I don't like making the same weapon twice. It's like, I already made that. I'm good. Yeah. You know, like this one, it took me, I actually cranked this out in about a week. Because um, I, I needed it for something else. They had the leather for it and everything. And for me, it's kind of cool. I'm actually going to redo it because I don't like some things about it. Um, oh, well, that's making it twice, Ronan. I know, but this is going to be cooler <coughs> looking. Just consider that's it different. an upgrade. Version 2.0. Yeah, it's an upgrade. Yeah, ver- version next version. Yeah, right, right, right. And um, like I said, this one took me like a week or so. The next one's going to take me a month. Because I want to get all the exact measurements and, you know, stuff like that. Mm. Uh, my favorite is probably a good tie between my Samus arm cannon and my Daedric mace. So the Daedric mace is hard because it has a lot of sharp points it's on so it. So cool. So. I wish that I wish you would have it here so you could I wish I would, too, them. but it's sad right now. It, it lost a blade oh, at no. our last photo shoot. Oh, so, yeah. Cause it's... So, yeah, I have to glue that back on. But it was definitely fun. There's a lot of details in it. So... Yeah, and they're light. And which a lot is the of best. different materials that you use yeah. too. Well, the Samus arm isn't exactly light, and it's kind of awkward because instead of being able to switch arms and stuff throughout the convention, you can't switch arms with Samus. It's, it's your arm. It's yeah. my arm. Yeah. It's a righty, so, right? It's a yeah, it's a righty. What's what mace is it from Skyrim? What? What mace is it? Just a general mace that you could build. So was it like an original design, or was it just one that you um, like just saw was, reference photos of? And yeah, a lot of it was like concept art type me stuff, but uh, a lot of it I wanted to kind of put my own, my own s- stuff into. I don't know, my own design into. That's so. a good How do you pick what weapons you want to make? Because so most characters in like RPGs, you can always change your weapons. Yeah. So right. how do you pick which one you like want to make? Uh, I always go for the one that looks like it's the hardest to make. Yeah. <laughs> for cosplay. Yeah. Yeah. I always go for the one that is the truest to the character, because there are some characters who use the same weapon more often than anything else. Like, for instance, Han Solo. He shot the first. The blaster. <laughs> yeah, he did shoot first. He did. Um, <laughs> DL-44 blaster. But, Controversy. But, but with that prop, that's, what the fav- that's my favorite prop that I have, and I didn't make it. Um, it's Tim's time. Uh, Tim Wynn on Facebook. He made that. And it is... It's scaled to my hand. It was 3D printed, so it's totally safe. The cap does not have to be orange because it's clearly not an actual gun that you can use for anything. Um, but, yeah, that's the favorite. It's my favorite. <laughs> for me, it's whatever looks coolest. And, again, it's whatever looks more challenging to make. Yeah, for sure. I'm in that boat. The, mm-hmm. coolest, the coolest weapon wins. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I Another one props. is... Uh, for example, stuff like my Daedrics. Daedrics are done not super often, but often enough that you know they have the swords. 
that's automatically what you think of when you think of the Daedric, the Daedric and then the two twin blade swords. So I wanted to do something that would kind of set me apart from other Daedric class players. Yes. I always wanted to do some wild stuff so I can make those big old long obscene swords with yeah. floating yeah. crystals going around them, you know. <laughs> that would That's like one of my dreams to do is just do, what is it? It's the mace that the dragon I use that's like just a giant crystal. Yeah, with it's the just a crystal and it's got I little crystal one. bits. Giant <laughs> crystal with crystal bits floating around it. I didn't make bits floating, but bits I Bits floating, the then we can Yeah, talk. that's just putting, putting bits on the... This, this is what it comes down to uh, in one of my articles on the cosplayforall.com. What's going to come down to is visualization. You know, you've got to be able to look at that and take it apart and figure out how you're going to do that. Either like, yeah. if you're going to make it mechanical, like floating bits... Um, you can have your, your crystal shape and then have cross section with like a round piece, just a round clear piece, and put on your crystals on that and have that spin. Mm -hmm. like now, that's easy like to do. Like a windmill. That's yeah, just like a windmill. Parts, you yeah. just have one little tiny motor in there, just let it spin on the inside. Like with acrylic, like little acrylic see through rods. To right. Each crystal. Either, either crystals or just a plate, and then you've got your floating. Bits that That's go one of the it. coolest part about cosplays is ha kind of having that different perspective on what you're building. This is a MacGyver tactic. Yeah, How can exactly. I do this? You right. gotta tear it from the inside. And out. there's a lot of factors, like because you have to follow rules as you're making things like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's usually for me. It's all about the order of operation, just like math. You don't do it in the right order, you're gonna get all messed up there yeah. by the time you get to the end and go, "Oh, I didn't do that right, and I can do that over." Yes, yeah, so that's the thing. A lot of people want to work outside in because they want it to look cool. Uh -huh. But then if you start talking about electronics, you start talking about all this stuff. You need space power supplies. for electronics, space for yep. batteries. So you, you have to build it from the inside yeah, out. Exactly. So you got to, you know, like this is cool, but it's solid. I can't do anything with this. So the next one I build, of course, is going to be hollow. I'm going to add electronics. You could, you could even take that, make a cast of it. Now you have, mm -hmm. you know, a hollow version. Yep. And then put your stuff in there. So there's mm -hmm. more than one way to skin yeah. that cat. Make right. a solid original and then oh. cast your secondary one because this may be heavy, but your cast could be very light in the end. Mm -hmm. Kitty. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Just kidding, cat. So uh, how about, here's a question. How do you get the reference to make it? I, I get all crazy detailed, which everyone knows, and as, as boring as I'll get out. I have a pair of digital calipers. You know, the little Harbor Freight digital calipers. They even have a, an upgraded one now that tells you in fractions, like it's 12 128ths. Wow, Not that fractions. you can measure that small. Oh fractions. Gosh. It was yeah. back to the high school algebra. Anyway, cool. I will take a picture. Like uh, right now I'm doing a, I have a thing running on the RPF uh, about BB-8, the new droid from Star Wars, the little round guy. Oh, We're heart. all trying to figure out how big he is. Well, we know that R2 Dito's, R2-D2 is about 19 inches across. Did you not see the replica video of him? Yeah, I, I did see that. Yeah. But then we're trying to figure out how, how big of a round that ball is, you know. So we're looking at the, uh, the road case that he's in. We know that that bar is about one inch. And so you take a measurement at that same perspective as the ball with the calibers or even with Photoshop or Illustrator. You take it in there. You draw a line. It says that line is 25 pixels long. And then you measure how long he is you know, by measuring a, a tangent across the circle. And, you know, all right, he's 500 pixels wide. You do the math, you know, between 1 equals 24 and then that 535, and you come up with about 24 inches. And so you – I, or you, you pick something like the size of the ear. You know, ears are more or less pretty consistent among people. Yeah. And if you can measure your ear, I don't know, unless you've got, like, gauge earrings, you know. Did you know that ears never stop growing? I know. Mm -hmm. I imagine by the time I'm an older man, I'm going to be, you know, down to my – my chin, you know. Yeah, well, that's exactly what I do too. Is uh, is uh, pick a known for, size. For example, for this one, um, I didn't do it on this particular one, but the next one I'm doing, I watched Clone Wars, and every episode where this gun was, I took a whole bunch of pictures, you know, screenshots, screenshots, and I, I probably have a folder of about forty in there, and so then I'll match it up. I'll find a shot where it's on the side, and blow it up on my screen to and measure my hand. Uh -huh. So okay, his, his hand was about there. Same idea, mm. and you find a reference. And then you can say, okay, so this was probably about nine inches, ten inches long. Right. And so then from there, uh, I go into, I actually use SketchUp because it's really easy. There's other 3D programs you can use for free. Uh, but then I, I take it there and I know, you know, most boards are three-quarter inch thickness. Or you can get half inch or a quarter inch. Or eighth inch. Yeah, and so I, into plastics, I make yeah. boards essentially and assemble it in, in there. And so I know where to cut, what, how much I need of what. Have you tried using 1, 2, 3D Make? I just downloaded it today. 
because you can take that and then end up with slices. So you mm -hmm. now know this is what the first slice looks like. Print it out, trace it on, cut it out. Here's the next slice, print it out. And mm -hmm. you just build it up by layers, kind of like a, like a fat 3D printer, you know, mm -hmm. a big heavy layer 3D printer. The manual way, the old school mm -hmm. way, you know. Yeah. Is that how you guys do that too, the screenshots? And uh, yeah. Most of the things I make, well, my, I my giant set they made actually <laughs> is an original design that I made up, so that was just kind of flowing out of me, and I was just kind of doing it. Uh, and the one I'm doing for Monster Hunter now is it luckily has like a 3D model design that I can look at. And that's how I usually do it, if I can find a 3D model. Yeah. I love reference photos, and I love action figures, and mm -hmm. I like to look at them, because an action figure will give you a 360 view of that character. And every character I've cosplayed, almost every character, I have some sort of like figurine or a bunch of photos of. I have a whole folder in my phone of cosplay reference photos. Yes. And uh, when I made my Thor hammer, I, like, like you said, you just kind of measure to scale and try to figure out where it goes, like how like long the handle is, to him, and I wanted to make it that long on me too, uh, so I don't have like because I'm a tiny human. Like I don't want to have this mm. massive hammer that doesn't. You look want to a man-sized hammer for a small female body, right? Mm. Yeah, like, and the, my Han Solo right. blaster. Luckily, because it was 3D printed, it could get scaled to my hand, so they had the measurements of it to make it fit. Because even the airsoft guns that I have for Lara Croft are too big for my hands, <laughs> but they're the only ones that I have, and then they've been useful so far. So that's what I that's what I continue to use. That's my big challenge with yellow jacket. From the trailer, all I see from from the Ant Man movie, all I see are just kind of front shots and a little bit of side. The back shots are all blurry, you know. So I'm I'm gonna have to try to sketch things in, you know, and trace it over, you know, inside a, a graphics program. Yeah, and it's really hard if you don't have a good back shot, a 360 or even a 3D model or a statue or an action figure to go off of. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just wing it, like like uh, Ash said. <laughs> have you ever <laughs> found someone life. like on Facebook that has done it too and reached out to them and find out? To ask them. Yeah, like, how did you do that? I see a lot mm -hmm. of um, sky hooks from, mm -hmm. from Bioshock, and I'm always like, did you make that or did you buy that? Something that, that I've asked uh, you before, like, because uh, Noah's got one, and it's really awesome. To my face, and very aggressively, did you make it or buy it? Kill <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. me! <laughs> Small human, calm down. <laughs> well, that's, what, I mean, I have this uh, uh, gun that I'm working on, or I worked on, it's already gone, but it's a, it's a carbine. So they're about yay big, and it's from Clone Wars, and I'm trying to figure out how long this is to, because I got all the other references, I just need to scale it properly, right. and I reached out to this one person, he's like, oh yeah, I did this one, um, and I did it this long, and sure enough, I did about that long, and it looked right. Mm -hmm. The first time I did it, it was too small, then it didn't look kind of weird, and as soon as he gave me that magic number, and that's one thing about the cosplay community, most people are, hey... Here, let me show you, share all my knowledge with you. So there are hobbies after high school where math could be very necessary. Unfortunately, Finding it's true. the tangent of a circle and measuring its length. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the Bill Nye of cosplay. I, appre I, I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm just crazy OCD detailed when it comes to that. <laughs> I'm not really OCD, but you know, not there's anything wrong with that. We have, to come with a, <laughs> we have to come up with a rhyme with that now for his name. And to go along with Bill Nye. So thank you for making me <laughs> obsess about something. Now. You better have a theme song by the time this next podcast happens. Uh, but Ronan, scientist. you've got your uh, you've got your helmet here. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we didn't talk about with safety is when your when your head is covered by something. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So this like helmet. You have no peripheral vision. Who's there? Is this it's right here. Oh, it's no. There's no. Okay, so this helmet <laughs> is you know typical Mandalorian, Boba Fett, Django <laughs> Fett, so like that, and. We have hardly any vision. I have another I'm helmet hold it up so that can... has, I can see through the eyes, I can see through the mouth grill, and you know, I'm huge in this costume. It's a big space right. marine from uh, the game Warhammer 40K. And you know, when someone's in front of me and I'm walking through a crowd, I can't see in front of me. Uh -huh. I can't see through this. And so a lot of times, you know, we'll ask people to move out of the way you know, nicely, because especially if we're doing a, a, we run bounties where we, people, give a donation and we go and get their friend and bring them in jail and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, I've been in there. <laughs> yeah, as long as they're willing, of course. Uh, but sometimes, you know, we can't see and we, we will run into people. Uh -huh. And it's, you know, I try to say sorry, um, but sometimes they're, they're mm -hmm. gone, gone, yeah. <laughs> Just say they're the droids you're looking for. Yeah. And so it's, it's really hard to see and stuff like that. So that's another thing is be aware of your surroundings, especially if I have a weapon too mm -hmm. and I got a backpack or something like that. I mean, I need to know... 
where, what's around me at all times. Right. Yeah, just keep your peripheral vision, like you turn your head if you mm -hmm. can, or maybe have somebody with you that, that's that a key can too. guide you through. It's almost like when you... Yeah, the handler. Handlers yeah. are really important for uh, stuff like this, especially if you have a bigger costume or you can't see much, uh -huh. or maybe you have some weapons. Um, you Spouses know. and boyfriends and girlfriends, they all come in handy as handlers. <laughs> yep. Older uh, kids, to younger kids, they don't work very well, trust me. But they older kids, you know, my kids are starting to get there where they can um, do stuff with me as long uh -huh. as it's I'm only there for two hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you can also, it's, uh, they also come in handy, you know, when you have contacts in mm -hmm. where, you know, they're harder to see, like the white out contacts or the mesh contacts when you just, I don't know, like when Gosh, you pick yeah. your contacts wisely. Um, but at the same time, sometimes you can't avoid not being able to see as well out of them. Or for instance, when I was body painted as Deadpool, my eyelids were the white part. So my eyes were closed in most pictures. <laughs> and so if there was a video happening, my eyes were closed Look during over the here, video. Deadpool. And I'm just like, I was following your voice. There are some photos where, like, as soon as you close your eyes, you, you lose your balance a little bit. So I was doing some photos where I was just trying to stand there balancing this katana with my eyes closed. And I'm like, some of them, I'm just like, okay, hold on. Like, i got to feel it out for a little bit. But you just have to be careful of other people. It's pretty much the moral of the story here. Mm -hmm. Even even uh, non proppy stuff, you know, with, uh, yeah. I mean, your, your uh, Warhammer costume. My Zod, my shoulders, my yeah, got big my pointy shoulders. Daedric Those Dance. catch on a lot of stuff. You walk huge. by, oh, sorry, you know, yeah. or it catches on this, or yeah, or Whitney's, someone steps on your cape, you know. You have Whit to do the sideways walk. Whitney's yeah. walking through. Forward. Whitney and her Vegeta pauldrons for her Vegeta costume. They're out to like here from you. Yeah, yeah. Met, met, my, <laughs> met my eyes when I was Master Roshi a couple times and drove sunglasses right into him. Kind of like walk sideways through people. Yeah. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Coming through. Yeah. Megan had to help me see my way through to last Comic Con a little bit because I was very clever and bought prescription wide out mesh contacts. Who who does that? That was stupid of me. People who totally uh, commit to their costume. <laughs> yes. Uh, so she had to hold my hand a little bit and guide me through where and I was she, going. And she wore them to an after party, which and it was very dark in that room. <laughs> and they had like a fog machine. Yeah. I was like, I can't see any. <laughs> so she couldn't see in the bright, the brightly lit convention, then there's no way she's going to be seeing at night with fog everywhere either. <laughs> so make sure you can you have your vision. Yeah, it's a very important have a sense to have. Yeah, have someone there that, you know, can guide you, guide you through things. Well, that's one thing, you know, we talked about big weapons going into crowds and stuff. That's kind of cool. But big costumes don't go into crowds. I mean, my or big... Or do. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, unless you want to stop the whole convention and yeah. stop the flow of traffic I and do. get everyone mad at you. I mean, I had Carl Urban say I had a cool costume because I held him up in traffic in the hallway. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. But anyway, I mean, uh, some especially at bigger cons, you know, what I call showstopper costumes. Yeah. The bigger ones. I mean, if you show up, this one con, um, I mean, from one end hall to the other, it took me two hours. Because everybody's stopping. Everybody wants yeah. a picture. And it's cool. Um, and your Mad-Eye yeah, Moody is just spot on. Yeah, but, but that's not a big one, though. That's just, I'm big because it's me. But it's <laughs> accurate. He's just yeah. like, dude, that looks just like him. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, that's, yeah. Another, that's another thing is be respectful of your fellow con goers. If someone wants a picture with you, Step out of traffic. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, when someone's like, can I get a picture? Don't just be like, okay, well, there's, I'm in the middle of an intersection. I'm going to spread out as wide as I possibly can yep. and hold my weapons out and stop everything around me. Right. Because then that tempts me to come out there and hit you with my giant nine foot. There's, Even if you think someone... it's real quick, oh, okay, you can do it. Let's do a real quick picture. No, it never is real quick. It's never real quick. Because what's they want to take multiple pictures, mm -hmm. maybe multiple angles, or people and then walk people in to do it. Like you, like someone's right, like, take yeah. a picture, and all of a sudden people are all like, "Ah, oh. mm -hmm. guys, Deadpool's over here fighting Spider-Man!" And then half an hour. Later, and then all of a sudden, Zana. the crowd will part, but the traffic still doesn't move. They part because mm -hmm. they're all circled around you trying to take your photo. Mm -hmm. um, there was someone dressed as um, a Big Daddy from Bioshock, and it was an amazing costume, but I never once saw it in person. Because they were in the hallway where there was enough space mm -hmm. for people to stop and take photos of them. Because those costumes are huge. huge. Mm -hmm. So, and I feel that was very smart of them. I wish I would have seen it, but I didn't get. You know, it's hard to get to the hallway. But, but it's cool when you have that open space where you're not hurting anyone else. You're not stopping the flow of traffic, and you're being respectful of people's, you know, their space. Now I know artists. I, I've heard this just kind of in in passing that artist alleys, they want to keep cosplayers out of that just yeah. because. You're interfering with their sales. You know, and artists, I think, probably make less than most of the other vendors mm -hmm. because it's it's nicer work and it's a bit more expensive. You know, so you really got to have time to sit there and go and just admire the work. You yeah, know, go, well, that's why you know, you that's take really cool. half a day or something like that and just 
dress down, yeah. regular clothes, and then that's when you hit up Artist Alley and get all your comic books. Yeah, I always signed. go there at like the very end of the day when like it's not as crowded, so I can actually go over to certain places that mm-hmm. I didn't get to see before. I usually try to wear like an easy costume. Yeah, at least I like half a day. That too. Just so like if I wear like Booker or something like that, I can just throw on and. If nobody knows who I am, I don't even look like I'm in costume, so I can kind of enjoy the con a little bit. But yeah, it makes it easier if you just and plus they like they're trying to like you said they're trying to sell their work, and you don't want to a ruin their work because if you have a big costume, there's a chance mm-hmm. of that, and b take away from them. Like he was saying, there's they don't make a lot of money, so if they say a cosplayer taking free pictures, they're not making as many sales, and they might hit you with my nine foot sort of thing, if, you know. I did help out artist uh, Tracy Watkins because he has this big Zod picture that he drew. So we took pictures together <laughs> with cool. Zod. So he was okay awesome. with that one, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 So uh, let's wrap this up a little bit. What are what's some just last minute advice that you want to give to someone who wants to do exactly what we're talking about? Uh, study up on skills. I mean, for example, you know, for wood weapons, I've been making wood stuff for years. Um, just like shelves and things like that. And it never clicked until a few months back that, oh, I can make wooden weapons, duh. And so those are skills that I learned other places that I can apply to these things. Yeah. yeah. Persistence. Because sometimes you make, like, number one, and it's cool, but then it's not what you'd like. Don't give mm-hmm. up on it. Like, if you mess up or something, most of the time it can be fixed. Like my expanding foam giant sword again is I've carved a part of it too thin, so now I have to add more. So that's going to be a pain in my butt, but I'm going to do it because I want it. So keep at it and don't give up on whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. Now, there's no right. There's no one right way to do it. You can use mix and match your materials. A little bit of wood for the thicker parts. A little bit of thin plastic for the thinner parts. I actually have plastic right here. These are the ends are plastic. Yeah. See, so there's really no right way to do it. You put it together with whatever works, you know, uh, you know, pipe caps and bodies with a, a plug on the end, you know, and you've got a shell, mm-hmm. you know, there's, um, you know, consider the weight. That's probably the biggest thing is consider the weight of your weapon. Plan ahead. And, and you know, <laughs> carry it around your house for a couple hours. See if you can do it, you know. Yeah. That was my biggest thing was just to plan <laughs> ahead. Um, know your convention world rules definitely because if you put a ton of time into a prop and you can't even take it into the convention, I know I would be mad. Yeah. I'd be extremely Furious. mad, but I would be even more mad knowing that I had that information readily available to me, and I just blatantly ignored it. Yeah, right, definitely. So we're going to wrap this up. Uh, you can find us on cosplayforall.com, and tune in next week for our next podcast. I'm Megan. I'm Ash. I'm Ronan. Noah. Eric. Safety first. <laughs> Don't aim it at the camera. <laughs> Yo, gangsta. As everyone's just, I'm waiting at the camera. Fuck life. <laughs>